Richard Corbin's 1970 comic book masterpiece, Rolf. Today we're going to look at Richard Corbin's 1970 comic book masterpiece, Rolf. But first let me show you the cover of my last feature film called Witch Tales. Now, this film is currently available on sale. There are only 13 copies left now, folks, on eBay. And they are signed and numbered. It is Pre-Code Tales of Terror, adapted to the screen. Witch Tales. Check it out. The copy you see here was published in 1971. This is the first printing. And soon after... Ripoff Press would release the second printing using this as the cover. Let me just give you a, a little background on Rolf and the publication, because this isn't the first time it appears in print. The information I'm going to give you now is primarily from a great website you need to check out called muta.net, M-U-U-T-A dot net. This is the ultimate resource for all things Richard Corbin. Rolf appeared for the first time in black and white in The Voice of Comicdom number 16, 1970, and number 17, which was published in 1971. It was reprinted in black and white as the story of Rolf from Ripoff Press in 1971, as I just mentioned, and then, later in color, in Heavy Metal Magazine, number 32, 1979, number 33, 1979, and number 34, 1980. There is another color reprint of Rolf in Richard Corbin Complete Works, number 3, which was published in 1987. So let's open up the book, shall we? Okay, now, first thing we see here on the left is a funny little character called Gurgi, and he's doing the introduction to the Rolf story. Now, Gurgi makes an appearance a few times in Skull Comics, Underground Comics, and a few other places. He's kind of like Richard Corbin's EC Crypt Keeper. Hi, comic weirdos. Yes, it's me, Gurgi. Free from the skull dungeons long enough to tell you a tale so intricate that I need a whole book to do it. Not only did I dig through the dusty dung heaps of ancient Erbithian lore for fragments of a fantastic story, but I sought a remote hairy hermit who calls himself Gore, though everyone knows him as Harvey, for the strange narrative. Details of the long-extinct demon horde were related by the obscure Martian martial historian Dav Holma of Methane, and he vouches for the accuracy. So, a long, long time ago began the story of Rolf. In Canisland, there is a beautifully voluptuous princess, Mariara, who is not interested in her grooms, but her dog, Rolf. Princess is kidnapped by demon troops, who also demolish the castle of Canisland. One groom, a friend of Sortrum the Sorcerer, blames Rolf, and he wants to transform the dog as human to torture the truth out of him. By accident, transformation will be disturbed, and Rolf becomes only half-dog, half-human. He cannot talk. But Rolf escapes, and he goes on a quest to rescue the princess. Just lovely early Corbin pen and ink. And of course, he's laying in the zipatone here, folks. This is Mariara right here. And of course, there's Rolf, her doggy. Rolf is kind of a tale of a girl and her dog. Rolf hangs out with Mariara. Everywhere she goes, she goes and she does a little skinny dipping here. Then she's attacked. There's a creature lurking. In the bushes, attacks her. He's attacked by another one. So these demon troopers overwhelm Rolf, and he runs off to get help. Meanwhile, of course, they abduct the princess. 
So what happens is there's this idiot that blames the dog on her abduction. So he wants to change the dog into a human and then torture the truth out of him as to what happened to the princess. So that's the idea. Unfortunately, the incantations do not go very well. There's a screw up and Rolf becomes half man, half dog. He's all over the place with the zip tone. I am just digging the shit out of that because it's basic zip tone. He's got the characters drawn out, pen and ink. Then he's applying like a certain grade of zip tone to the grass, then another grade to the sky. And it's very basic stuff. He's just using, you know, flat zip tones here. But it really makes the panels pop. Once again, he's doing zip tone for the grass and a couple of characters. When he gets into creepy and eerie and he's doing the black and whites, he's just even better. He gets more complex with the zip tones. There's Rolf, and he's just kind of looking around, but the way it, Corbin just nails the animals, and I've mentioned this before, he has a thing with wolves and dogs. It, they're just fantastic. I mean, like much like his humans, which the facial characteristics and everything you can see. For instance, with Rolf here, he's just looking around, his tongue's hanging out like a dog. Like you'd see a dog just kind of like looking around and his tongue's just flopping out of his mouth. And he portrays this perfectly. Great zip tone, pen and ink. One of the things that he's getting into here is a lot of action. Rolf is battling one of the demon troopers here. Corbin's mastery already of movement, human movement in running, jumping, fighting, hitting, everything. He's just nailing it. Great panel here with Rolf in shadow. The guy kicks Rolf here. And then Rolf smacks up against the wall and look at his little, his face it's like, whoop! Just fantastic emoting from the faces of these characters. So yeah, without giving away the ending and everything, I think I'm going to keep it like that, but I want to give you some background. Rudy Frankie from the voice of comicdom back in the 60s and 70s had conducted an interview with Corbin, and that was landed at the same time that they published Rolf. In this issue, which is Comicdom number 16, winter of 1970, Rolf is the special feature. How long have you been working on it? Corbin answers, Rolf was first conceived a couple of years ago, so this would have been in the late 60s, not as a comic story, but as a film. After several futile attempts at producing it, we gave it up for another script. Note, Corbin did make the short film Neverwhere in 1969 using a combination of graphic animation and live action. Corbin continues, After the Monsters Rule comic story was finished, I was looking for a story to appear in the voice of comicdom, and I remembered Rolf. I gave this much thought and finally decided I could do the story justice in the comic strip medium. Much preliminary work had already been done. This became very useful when adapting it to the comic strip. Several models of the characters had been built. These were now used to draw from. A friend of mine, Dave Holman, deserves all the credit for designing the demon's tanks and equipment their characterizations, and the plotting of certain scenes. It is difficult to say how much actual drawing time was spent on the final pages. I occasionally did two or three pages a week, working evenings and weekends, but I didn't work on it constantly. So that's the thing. Originally, Rolf was supposed to be another film, kind of like a follow-up to his 1969 short film Neverwhere, but it just never happened. So he decided to put it in comic book form. As far as I'm concerned, it works very well in black and white 
and in color. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the first page in black and white, and then of course on the right is in color. And here are a few more pages that are in color, and I believe most of these pages were taken from the issues of heavy metal. One of the next videos I'm going to be doing is going to be on Metal Herlal issues number one and two, and you will see early Corbin in color, including Sid and Opie, which is another fantastic story. It is shorter than Rolf. It's only an eight to ten page story. So that concludes this video on Richard Corbin's Rolf. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.